right, let's move on to the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN on Saturday. That's between number nine, Oklahoma State, and number five, Notre Dame. Notre Dame, two, two and a half point favorite here over under 45 and a half. This game will be played at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. Notes here with Brian Kelly leaving for Baton Rouge. Marcus Freeman, new head coach, will obviously take over the reins here. And for Notre Dame, star safety Kyle Hamilton, he won't play. Additionally, their star running back, Kyron Williams, will also skip the Fiesta Bowl to prepare for the NFL draft. Oklahoma State's defensive coordinator, Jim Knowles, who left at the same position at Ohio State, will coach the defense for this bowl. That's really important here. When I look at this game, look, I, I love Oklahoma State, man. Um, and Spencer Sanders scares me, but um, I dug in the Notre Dame, and I think that they're a bit of a paper tiger without Kyron Williams. Kyron Williams, thought it was huge. Towards the end of the year, he really came on. The offensive line had some changes, but, you know, obviously not having Kyle Hamilton out there will hurt. The Notre Dame bottom 20 in defensive line havoc and sacks allowed. That's big against Oklahoma State, top five in both. So I think that there's going to be some havoc here against Cone. Notre Dame also ran really well in the red zone and in finishing drive. I don't think that that they can't really run the ball without Williams. I don't think that that can persist against an Oklahoma State defense. That's excellent when it comes to finishing drives. And I think Oklahoma State has some positive regression in that aspect as their offense did get a little better as the year went on. But the, look, Notre Dame's schedule, you have to, you can't just look at the strength of schedule and who they put, you have to really t- dive deeper here. And they benefited from a lucky schedule. Look, they were 11 and one on the season through one possession games. They trailed or led by four or less in the fourth quarter in seven of their 12 games. So they went six and one against bowl teams. So those are the ones that really matter. Let's look at those games. They played Wisconsin without Braylon Allen, completely different Wisconsin team who couldn't run the ball at all. Then they trailed going into the fourth quarter in that game. And then Mertz vomited on himself. They played Toledo without Daquan Finn. Toledo much better with Finn. Toledo led at, in South Bend going into the fourth. Notre Dame won by three. Okay, they beat Purdue at home by 14. It was a four-point game in the fourth. They lost to Cincy at home. They beat Va Tech by three. Trailed going into the fourth. They beat UNC by 10. They gave up 600 yards and were out gaining that game. Four-point game in the fourth. Then they played Virginia without Brennan Armstrong. Who cares? That's not a bowl caliber team. Virginia without Brennan Armstrong. It's It's... It's the, the Chiefs without Patrick Mahomes. The, the, Brennan Armstrong is their entire team. They even faced Georgia Tech, a non-bowl team, without Gibbs. Like a completely different team. So like every single possible team that you know that they could have played that was a little short-handed. You know, by the way, they went to they went to overtime with Florida State to start the year. Another non-bowl team. They won by that game by three. So, you know, one of their last six opponents, they started blowing out these teams were bowl caliber because U, UVA with Brennan Arm without Brennan Armstrong is not a bowl caliber team. And the only that on, that team was UNC who outgained them, so I think this UNC team, this Notre Dame team, is a bit overrated and overinflated in the market because of some of these results at the end of the year against non bowl teams or completely crippled bowl teams. And now you lose Kyron Williams, just a huge piece of that team. I think Oklahoma State's defensive line is going to have a huge day here, and I think that they can do enough on offense to get this done. I'm just waiting on the three. Give me, it looks like every ticket in the world's on Notre Dame. It, it just get the, get this to three. Someone fucking put a three out there for me. I've been staring at this line for weeks. Pokes. Yeah, I, I'm 100% with you. I'll only add a couple things here. I mean, whether Jim Knowles is there or not, I mean, the whole defensive staff, nothing's changed here. Even Joe Bob Clements, the defensive line coach, took the podium yesterday and he said the game plan, uh, you know, right now is a collective effort. And we all know that one one thing that we have to do is stop tight end Michael Mayer. So it doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. They will be all over uh, Mayer uh, like crazy. So uh, this is just, a, to me, uh, a not good situation for Notre Dame. You mentioned about, I mean, I lost the season win total under nine on some just, you know, some ridiculousness this year that Notre Dame was able to, you know, do, especially. Yeah, people were, people were look, I, I don't blame Notre Dame. People were low on this team coming into the year. They overperformed. They won a lot of close games. They got a lot of breaks with who was playing. Like, I love the higher Marcus Freeman, but they got a lot of breaks on, you know, playing Virginia without Armstrong, playing Wisconsin without Allen, winning all these close games late. But 
yeah. people were, you know, then, then they win, they went six or seven to close the year against mainly non bowl teams. And then everyone has forgotten. This is co- sort of a rebuilding year for Notre Dame. You got to give credit to the program for their year. But I, I think that the, the impression of this Notre Dame team is completely overinflated. Uh, and then this is still an Oklahoma State team that I have as the second rate, ranked defense in the country. Well, I think another thing to take in consideration, we're not a trends podcast, but Mike Gundy is 10 and five against the spread in bowl games. And I believe I have to double check me on this, but I believe he's won five. He's covered this spread five straight in bowl games. So he has progressed as he's been in this role for, for the Cowboys for a long time uh, when it comes to bowl preparation. Uh, and then, you know, the offensive side, I was a little hesitant with Oklahoma state when this number first came out because of what we saw with Spencer Sanders and the multiple defense. But like I said before, Baylor, Dave Aranda, every time he's seen Spencer Sanders, he's given him a ton of trouble, but Spencer Sanders has been fine without that. Marcus Freeman's going to continue to go with four, three and a four, two, five. Um, you know, they're pretty I mean, they're top 25 sack rate and passing downs. So if we can just eliminate, you know, the Spencer Sanders, but that number does include Kyle Hamilton. And there was a really soft schedule there at the end. So I'm not sure we're going to get that same Notre Dame defense. Uh, They're fired up to have Marcus Freeman in place. That's great. But at the same time, if we get a clean sheet from Spencer Sanders here, um, then absolutely, then they're they're going to win this game outright. Uh, So I'm with you. I'm waiting for the Oklahoma State plus three. If we don't get it, I'd rather play money line than the two and a half.